Hey everyone, this is Gina Doyle and Darren Eastman, and today we're going to talk about our 16-4 milestone kick kickoff for the runner group. Um, I'm going to take it first and just talk about runner fleet. Start sharing my screen. So uh, just as a reminder, runner fleet focuses on users who are managing large numbers of runners, which we refer to as a fleet, and uh, making it easier to manage them and take action based on whatever's happening with the fleet. So we have uh, some features that connect to what we were working on last milestone, which are around the fleet dashboard MVC. And this is more of a feature that provides um, a higher visibility into the fleet of runners that you're working with. Right now, we're doing a lot of work to be able to gather all of the data that's needed to be able to showcase that in the dashboard. So most of the issues that we're working on relate to that. Um, I'm not going to go into too much depth there. So then I'll just switch over to what we're working on for UX in that area, which one of the big problems that we are focusing on right now is providing more visibility into runner cost. That includes um, stuff like when you deal with SaaS runners, um, dealing with the compute minutes and how much those cost you. So we're looking into problem validation for that to focus on self-managed users who are bringing their own fleets of runners, as well as those who are using SaaS and bringing their own fleet, um, specifically using cloud platforms to create those runners. And then while we're doing that, we're also going to take a step forward to be able to start presenting some information as to how much uh, usage you, you have in your fleet. So we're going to start displaying um, job duration or what we're referring to this as runner minutes, but really just the minutes from when the runner starts the job to when it ends so that you have a better idea of runner usage across your fleet and then even the projects that are using the runners most often. Um, so that's something that we're going to move forward with as we do the problem validation on the side. And then finally, something we're going to concentrate on is exposing runner configurations in the runners page. If you've used our new runner creation workflow, you'll know that uh, this runner configurations definitely play a much larger role than they did before uh, because now we're grouping them based on that basically in the UI. So we want to just make that more of like a first class citizen and make it easier to understand why runners are grouped and um, just give you like more access into the configuration since it is such a large role when you create runners. That is it for UX. So I'm going to pass it to Darren to talk about runner core. Hey, thanks a bunch, Gina. Hey, everyone. Um, so going to give you a quick overview of what's um, happening in runner core in terms of um, new features in 16.4 and a quick touch on capabilities that we're building in 16.4 that will enable us to actually release um, features that you can consume in 16.5. Um, on my screen, and hopefully I'm sharing the right screen because sometimes Zoom shares the wrong screen. This is just to kind of like level set everyone. This is kind of like our single source of truth, or not like it, it is our single source of truth for the run and core category direction. Uh, always recommend folks kind of start here to understand the high level view in terms of the big things that we're working on this fiscal year, as well as thinking about for next fiscal year. Um, you start here, kind of got a high level view, and then you can go a little bit deeper in terms of our project repos and issues and kind of look at more detailed stuff. Um, but just to level set the conversation today in terms of our one year plan, we've got some big, sort of meaty, meaty product themes at our product leadership level. And under world class DevSecOps experience, the big things for the runner core team that we've been working on for the entire year thus far the first thing is the next runner token architecture. Most of the features and capabilities in that space are done. We're in feedback mode, if you will, gathering feedback continuously from customers. And Gina just touched on one thing that's on the runner fleet side of the house where we have to improve the configuration. So we're in, in feedback gathering mode, no new uh, significant features or capabilities are planned because we've already done the work for this uh, in the early part of this year. But the next thing I want to call your attention to is next runner auto scaling. Um, 
So for folks who um, kind of need a, a quick refresher, next order auto scaling is the feature set that we have developed here at GitLab that is the replacement for our Docker machine based auto scaler. That's the auto scaler that a lot of our customers use to auto scale GitLab runners, specifically on public cloud compute and more specifically in public cloud sort of virtual machine or instances, right? Um, that auto scaling solution again is separate from our Kubernetes auto scaling solution. So we have two. So if you're a GitLab customer and you're looking for an auto scaling runner solution, we've got multiple features and capabilities that you can choose from. One is auto scaling on virtual machines, and then one is Kubernetes. So just to come back to the roadmap, the next order auto scaling is interesting, really great new technology developed by our runner core team, where we have a whole new framework for auto scaling runners on public cloud instances. And so we are releasing and supporting plugins for the major public cloud platforms. And we have this plugin framework that will enable you to develop your own plugins for other cloud platforms as well. Et cetera, et cetera, that are not supported in our default repository. So for 16.4, I'm going to switch over now to that integration plan. We're working on some prerequisite work to get the EC2, the AWS EC2 plugin ready for beta. It's currently an experimental phase. And so just diving into the run and core plan here for a moment. Um, when you come to the run and core plan, the features, you'll see the section called runner auto scaling and then the AWS plugin. We're working on, on the prerequisite tasks for transitioning to beta. So we, our goal is to get these tasks done in 16.4 so that in 16.5, we will announce the plugin for AWS as being ready for beta. And then we want to go with maybe one or two releases and then we'll go to GA. The, other, the only other net new feature I want to call out in Runner Core that's not specific to this auto scaling feature set of capabilities bucket as is here, it's this kind of in the weeds, kind of very cryptically named thing called support for passing a custom Kubernetes part spec. Um, this is in our Kubernetes executor. So as I mentioned before, we've got Kubernetes one, as one option for you, and we have auto scaling and virtual machines as the other option. And so what this feature is, which it sounds like it's super uninteresting, it's like, why do I need this? Um, for our customers who have invested a lot of time, we have a number of customers that are, rely on Kubernetes for scaling millions and millions of CI jobs across their self-managed running environments. What this does is allows to pass a custom pod spec that simplifies configuring the Kubernetes runner manager and the workers. We released an alpha for this feature a few releases back. And now the next goal is to enable the feature flag and, and actually formally call this pod stack feature beta so that folks that are interested in testing this out and, 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 you know, and, and giving it a shot can go ahead and do so, knowing that we are full on planning to go GA um, in a couple of releases after 16.4. Of course, the, the plans for GA will change um, based on the feedback we get from more customers that are testing the beta. But we're super excited about this Kubernetes pod spec feature we have other capabilities planned or at least thought about in FY25, where we hope to enable the developer persona to be able to specify the pod spec configuration changes in their GitLab CI pipeline file, which makes for a really interesting and value proposition in terms of folks being able to run workloads on the target platforms that they need for Kubernetes and running in multi-architecture multi, multi um, environments GPU enabled versus not, and so on. So it's a really powerful feature. We probably, uh, probably we will be creating a blog post and a, an additional video around the custom Kubernetes spot spec. So if we run a call, that's what we've got, a custom Kubernetes spot spec in 16.4 moving to beta, and then the pre-work for the um, auto scaling plugin for AWS, um, and with that coming in 16.5 as beta. Back to you, Gina. Thanks, Darren. So if you have any feedback for us uh, per usual, please reach out either uh, through issues or through either of Darren or I's email as well. And we appreciate all the feedback that we've gotten so far about the numerous features we've been releasing. Thanks for watching. Thanks everyone, bye-bye.